and welcome to the Kalama YouTube channel. I'm Natasha and I'll be your host today. I don't know how much time went by since I recorded last. Of course, I was knitting all this time non-stop. Of course, I was uh, <laughs> working and uh, for some reason, like, you know, when you get out of the routine for a second recording all your works in progress then it becomes a bit difficult to start recording again because you have this huge amount of projects that you completed and also um, a lots of projects on what you're working so i decided to just pick some of them and just show like slowly through the through my podcast uh, my finished object so I wouldn't overwhelm one podcast so as you can see I got a, a new piano which I'm very excited about because at first I had a bigger black piano which was taking almost like half of a living room so now I'm super excited to have uh, this nice tiny piano that just takes a small <laughs> a corner in this room so and i'm having today um, some uh, blueberry herbal tea with ginger uh, for some reason i started to like this taste so much like if you think blueberry with ginger it doesn't um, sound like it they go together but they actually do go together very well and i enjoy this warm drink uh, a lot as uh, this autumn and i have it in ceramic mag for, mug for um, from our local art, ceramic artist and I really like it <laughs> looks really great so my first finished object that I wanted to talk about it's on me uh, I started to knit this top way back in 2019 I purchased a very nice uh, um, yarn it's 80% uh, silk and 20% uh, viscose and it's yarn on cone very like uh, 1500 meters per sto gra 100 grams so and I was holding this yarn double and I started to knit top yeah like I said in 2019 I was working on it and then I put it away and didn't touch it but then I had I was inspired again to find it and picked it up and I finished it so I basically have here I'll just a bit closer yeah as I said I was holding a yarn double and I was knitting on 3.5 millimeter needles I have this on the bottom and also here a little bit zigzag going so and I basically knitted a square with a circle yoke and then I just did uh, one by one twisted rib for um, sleeves and I actually really enjoy this top because uh, at first I thought oh, I'm working so slowly on it and summer is almost over but then I realized that this piece you can wear on top of dresses you can wear it like in summer just like a plain top and also you can wear it, it with cardigans that also was one of the uh, main ideas why I decided to like first I thought maybe I should do ruffles here on the sleeves but then I thought no if I do just the plain sleeves and I can wear it with all the cardigans and everything so I'm super pleased with this top and it's a bit of shame that I didn't finish it a long <laughs> time ago but still now it's done I washed it and this yarn a little bit changed after washing just a little bit became like softer more pleasant more didn't uh, bloom but still effect is really nice so I'm super pleased also for many autumns I really wanted to knit uh, some kind of pumpkin <laughs> for Thanksgiving decoration right and um, it just fe feels like I never got to it uh, but this year I knitted one pumpkin actually I wanted to knit few of them but I knitted one so I found this uh, pattern which is called pumpkin from your stash I really like this cute uh, curled um, crocheted um, branches and also um, it's really fun to use for pumpkins um, yarn from your stash maybe that is um, too prickly or too rustic but in pumpkin it just looks so gorgeous like uh, so this one was decorating like I had a basket and I 
put like some hay in it and then I put pumpkin on top and it was like a really nice autumn decoration. Maybe I should put it here so I would decorate <laughs> podcast for us. I'm actually uh, so much enjoying the sun that is shining through my window because uh, like you know in autumn you can get uh, quite a few gloomy days but here in Manitoba we shouldn't complain about gloomy days because when winter comes and the colder it is outside, the more <laughs> sun is shining. So it's very tricky weather because you can look through the window and you feel like, oh wow, such a nice, beautiful, warm day. But that actually means that it's super cold. So then I was also, um, I wanted to try some cashmere and um, I didn't want to buy right away uh, quantity, um, like sweater quantity of cashmere because like, I mean, I wanted to try cashmere in balls, especially like Cardiff cashmere. I tried some cashmere on cone, but it's uh, but while you're working uh, from yarns from cone, uh, they're not as soft and pleasant to the touch until you wash them, right? And after washing, they bloom and change and they become beautiful. So, but I wanted to try uh, cashmere in a, um, balls so right away so when you work with it it's really soft so i i had 25 gram uh, cashmere uh, ball and i knitted this beautiful scarf uh it's also pattern i'll leave uh, i'll everything i talk about patterns and stuff i will leave in the um, uh, description box below so this uh, cashmere uh, scarf that uses only 25 grams of cashmere is uh, called gentle touch uh, also you can find it on Ravelry so and when I knitted the scarf and I'm wearing it it's just so amazing because cashmere probably uh, creates this type of fabric that just kind of blends with, <laughs> with your skin I don't know it just like um, takes shape of your skin and just so soft and beautiful and I of course put will put um, some pictures so I liked it so much so I knitted myself three of those one in uh, this off co a white color and one brown and one light pink and I'll also insert pictures how it looked look on me so I don't <laughs> wrap it up around myself now but it's really nice a uh, soft fabric really nice and soft and as this scarf is perfect like you can use it uh, for like under jackets or even with a blouse like you know if you go to the office also you can uh, wrap around your neck if you have prickly for example Icelandic sweater or something and only your neck is sensitive so this one is perfect and especially you don't really have to uh, tie it up around the neck you can just hide ends and then yeah here off you go some people use silk scarves for that matter but you can use actual cashmere one and then you can actually try cashmere and then decide if you want to work with it so next finished object is this beautiful angora fur hat really nice and fluffy <laughs> sorry the motorcycle is going by uh, so i knitted this hat actually twice because I used one pattern first, pattern first, but then it didn't look very good. Like a uh, knitted hat on a table uh, when it was uh, drying, it, it looked really nice. But when you put it on, it was like really funny looking hat. So I was looking for some patterns in Ravelry and I found uh, this pattern, It, uh, but this pattern is free, but also it's only in two languages, Polish or Russian. So I will also link leave link below for this nice hat and i won't put it on right now but you can see it's nice uh, fluffy hat and when you knit out of gore on gore it's fluffy right away but also it gets more and more fluffier uh, with wear and with um, washing so that's the second finished object or third fourth
would like to move into works and progress so my works in progress uh, uh, if you look at this yarn you probably know it is what it is it's zumber ball and uh, maybe i'm not pronouncing right but i always were eyeing uh, this yarn but never tried it before it's uh, wool with nylon and so uh, finally i decided to treat myself to one ball of this yarn and i actually started to work on a sock already uh, this pattern that, uh, that I'm using, it's not a pattern, I'm just, um, I just cast on usual, usual amount of stitches and I'm knitting for myself, usually I do cast on uh, 56 stitches on 2.5 millimeter needles because I have very narrow foot or maybe it depends on my gauge, I don't know. So I'm knitting 3x1 rib and here I have this strong uh, heel that's called strong and then I'm keep going and as you can see colors are so gorgeous and yarn is so much fun because it's kind of goes twist with darker and lighter yarn so my idea is I will just knit one sock and then the other one they will not be matching I don't know if with Zumba ball you can make matching socks or not I should google it but I don't see color repeat repetition in here but we'll see so that been a lot of fun and it's actually my project that i keep in a car if i drive somewhere drive somewhere and then i need to wait or sit in the car uh, then i just pick up my knitting and knit on it because it's like i love nine each circular needles and i love to knit with them okay now it's time to get a sip of tea It's interesting, I heard from a lot of knitters, when you become a knitter, you also love and appreciate uh, handmade mugs as well. Maybe we, when we get into slow fashion, we appreciate a lot of handmade things. Next uh, project uh, that I was been working with, it's this beautiful sweater. I'm sorry, there will be some white, um, <laughs> Uh, white pieces of fleece from other projects because uh, a lot of my projects are together uh, but of course when I'm done I will clean it and wash it so I'm knitting Cristalla top uh, this one also knitted out of 100% cashmere by Kariaji it's also yarn on cone it's also one um, very fine thread 1500 meters and I'm holding it triple and I had only 240 grams and I decided to knit body and then knit sleeves and see how much, how long they will be and then try it on and decide what I want to do. But actually, uh, I don't like this um, length of sleeves. So what I will do, I found um, black merino wool, also the same thickness, but this one is by Zekna Barufa. A super Geelong and I'm planning to hold uh, this yarn double and I will unravel just leave two two repeats of this pattern <clears throat> and the rest I will unravel and with this leftover yarn I will knit sleeves also to the length and try to do two repeats and then I will finish up here with black so it would be like kind of black edging on the bottom and on the sleeves and that way I'll have a cashmere sweater <laughs> with black edge, edging on sleeves and on body so I tried it on it looks very nice and as I, as I said um, cashmere on cone it really blooms and changes after washing so this sweater would look really beautiful once it uh, blocked <clears throat> and then <laughs> if I'm in cashmere mode I also had this cashmere by the way I'll leave the store where I buy yarn on cone it's located in Germany so unfortunately it's um, shipping to Canada is quite expensive but yarn is really good in this store so in this one cashmere 3000 uh, by Hibicus Filati and it's kind of like a chain and this cashmere blooms like crazy after washing but uh, because it's chain and it opens up so I'm, I started to knit with it how much? I think I have 450 grams of it and 
um, also this cashmere while it's not washed it feels kind of more like cotton and on needles five i started to knit uh, sweater number 18 i believe it's 18 if not i'll put <laughs> a different uh, number on the screen so far i like it but it has some um, some positive ease i mean between stitches like you know i'm not knitting tight but i'm still a little bit not sure like after washing maybe i should knit on six millimeter needles but anyways like top part i usually like to knit like a bit tighter gauge like shoulders because that's where weight of the sweater comes and maybe after i need sli attached sleeves right like body down maybe i'll knit on 5.5 millimeter needles uh just to make um just to make fabric more elastic and stretchable so <clears throat> And also, also for many ye years, I was watching and following uh, Stephen West's call, like shawl calls, uh, but I never was brave enough to participate because sometimes they are sometimes so big and humongous and stuff like that. And sometimes design is like uh, very specific, like all Stephen West designs, like you have to like them. Uh, but this year I decided to risk it. <laughs> and participate and knit a shawl together but i knew uh, that i wouldn't be able to knit as fast as clues coming out because some people fast knitters some people monogamous knitters i'm not I'm, I'm getting bored with one project so i knew i will be knitting it more slowly but then as most of you probably know there was a, a little bit issue with a first clue and then <laughs> so i was lucky enough because i was slow right so i didn't have to re-knit it and when i started to knit mine i uh, started through the ways uh, from second uh, second variation of a first clue so these ones are my colors i'm sure i'm not spoiling it for anyone because um, most people are done with their shawls but I'm still working on mine. And what I decided to do with mine, I was looking, I wanted to use mustache yarn and I, I knew that I don't wanna knit it on like very fine needles. So I chose 4.5 millimeter needles. I knew I want my uh, shawl to be squishy. I knew I want to have their kid silk added. So my kids, uh, I'll show it's recycled Merina Superwash. And I'm also holding it double with uh, drops kit silk. So I have yellow color and I will put the numbers and for colors down below. So I have kit silk drops and a yellow together. Then I have this beige brown with kit silk which i bought from amazon it has like small paillettes and it's really nice small shine so they go together and then i didn't have for orange and red i didn't have kit silk so but i had white kit silk and i decided to dye it but i decided not to unwind them like into hanks to dye i decided to dye them like in balls i knew you i will get like some white spots so uh, yarn wouldn't be like exactly same color but it didn't matter because i knew i will be holding with the main color so i didn't even finish my first clue yet but what like i was uh, knitting on it fast and i really enjoyed it until i looked uh, at the spoilers for a second and third clue and i was hoping like kind of that this shawl would be humongous kind of like half and half wrap or something like that but then i saw that it's actually triangular wrap like it's not massive <laughs> big shawl so but mine will be more massive because i'm using like uh, bigger needles and thicker yarn 
so and then i stop but i think now i will pick it up and start knitting on it again because i have some projects that are off my needles but they're um i wash them and they're still not dry so i can show them to you today but i'll show it in next next podcast but what i mean i have some now time to work on this one so and i hope i finish it at least i'm happy with my color combination i wanted um something bright and something like a, autumnal colors that's why i was thinking should i put green here or red but then i went with red so that's all my works in progress that i wanted to show uh, you today i'm very passionate about knitting um, especially now with autumn we had already snow uh, we so far we are having very mild autumn usually at this time it's all covered in snow and very cold uh, we had snow on and off but we have a lot of warm days like plus 10 plus 5 uh, lots of sun which makes me happy uh, sometimes i wish we would have some rain because i feel like when it's raining outside and you have candle inside and you're just knitting away cozy but in this weather it's also perfect um, we also had already the santa parade in our city uh, which where we went with kids it was a lot of fun to see all the floats all the cars <laughs> christmas lights and i also will uh, put together a small video and i will attach it in the end of this video for those of us who want to watch it and <clears throat> if I have a question if any of you were participating this year or previous years in Stephen West's call tell me what you think <laughs> did you like to knit did you finish your project did you enjoy it or how you, you felt I know this topic is a little bit old already but still I'm excited because it's first time for me I didn't need any of his patterns and I'm, I'm happy that I tried so I'll try to podcast more regularly from now on when I'm like, you know, kids in school. Uh, so it's so much easier to find this time to actually sit down in quietness. I know furnace goes on and off, but it's still uh, pretty quiet compared to when you have kids running around. Uh, I hope your autumn goes well <laughs> but i feel already like especially after santa parade i feel like it's christmas already but it's at least good that we don't have too much snow outside so it doesn't um become completely christmasy also this year i'm planning to do some vlogmases i don't think i'll be able to do every day because um i don't think i would find um uh, what to talk about <laughs> every day but uh, I for sure want to do every couple days some kind of a Christmas vlog and just really get uh, get in the Christmas spirit and I always love to watch um, Anna knitting and uh, knitter uh, she always does those uh, awesome Christmas vlogs but she prepares like before that and she plans and they're always so so much fun to watch they're so cozy and uh, also i enjoy this no every november <laughs> I, I don't know if any of you heard uh, about ina knitter and she lives in Norway. and november is the gloomiest month of the year and she decided to do november cozy videos so and i've been following now it's a 30 years that I, i'm watching her november videos i watch other videos too but i mean uh, november ones are really fun to watch and i'll leave you a link for her November cozy videos maybe for some of you who would be interested to watch some cozy November videos so it was so nice uh, talking to you guys and I hope you will enjoy Santa Parade in the end of this video and I'll talk to you soon bye